welcome to the 100th installment of Tell Alejandro, your number one place for sports, cars, video games, fitness. If you're a man, you're here. Mr. Alejandro, about to tell him. What you about to tell him, Alejandro? I'm about to tell him about the Colts versus the Patriots and the Seahawks versus the Packers. And who's going to the Super Bowl? Tell him, Alejandro. T.A. Drinkers, do you feel that? That's Super Saiyan, Mr. Alejandro. You know why? Because Tell Him Alejandro just made it to its 100th episode. That means for the past year, Mr. Alejandro has been giving you that work. Getting at all your favorite sports cars, video games, and fitness topics. Because we here at Tell Him Alejandro don't fall off. We step it up, son. Step it up, son. And I'm going to keep stepping it up for the next 100 eps, and the next 100 eps, and the next 100 eps. We can't stop. Mr. Alejandro and the TA Drinkers headed straight to the top. We're only getting bigger and better. Just remember, y'all saw it first. I love doing what I do. Speaking on topics that I love and entertaining you. So thank you very much, TA Drinkers. Hey. TA Drinkers, Sunday we had the two games play out which decided which team will go to the Super Bowl. First game we had the Seattle Seahawks and the Green Bay Packers. That game was phenomenal. But I want to talk about the second game briefly because it basically was brief. The second game was the Indianapolis Colts versus the New England Patriots. It was a blowout, 45-7. to The drama from that game came days after the game finished. I will get to that juicy stuff. But let's go to the first game because the first game was an instant classic. The first game reminded me of game six of the Miami Heat versus the San Antonio Spurs. This game between the Seahawks and the Green Bay Packers, hands down, one of the best football games I have ever seen in my life. Wow, what a game. Okay, now check this out. The Green Bay Packers were winning this game decisively going into the fourth quarter. The Green Bay Packers had the game won, but then they began to get conservative. They got soft. They got scared, and they forgot that they're going against the champs. And when you have the champs down and not out, you got to jump off the top rope and hit them with that elbow. They forgot to hit them with the elbow drop. Fans started leaving the Seahawks stadium. The game was played in Seattle. Some of the fans lost faith. Some of the fans lost hope. Some of the 12th man, as they like to call themselves, dipped out. Then they tried to come back to the stadium and they couldn't. They missed all the sexiness. Let's start off with the Seattle Seahawks scoring with a fake field goal. It was like, oh, all right, we see what's going on. This is all going down in the fourth quarter, by the way. The Seahawks are down double digits. They need multiple possessions to get back into this game. After that, the Green Bay Packers later on in the game get an interception. Morgan Burnett, the safety with the Beastie Dreads, and he immediately laid down on the ground. That came back to haunt the Green Bay Packers. If you go back and look at the play, Burnett had a clear path. He could have got at least 20 plus yards. Maybe could have even took that interception to the crib. And that would have sealed the game. But instead, he instantly dropped down to prevent himself from possibly turning the ball over, giving his offense the rock and trying to burn the clock. It came back to hurt the Packers. The Seahawks end up scoring again. Another touchdown. Then, the Seahawks need to get an onside kick. This is where things get crazy. If the Seahawks don't get the onside kick, Seahawks lose the game. The Seahawks get the onside kick. The player for the Green Bay Packers, Brandon Bostick, he's a tight end. He tried to get the onside kick, and it bounced off his hands. The kid feels awful. He even said it after the game. The play was not designed for him to go to try and get the football. He was supposed to block and allow Jordy Nelson to go get the football. I'm going to keep it a buck with you, son. When the ball's that close to you, anything can happen I don't blame that kid for going for it because you know why if he didn't go for the rock and the ball would have possibly hit the back of his leg or hit one of the Green Bay Packers and then roll out of bounds then everybody would be like wow why didn't you try and grab it so it's like he was kind of put in a bad situation he tried to get the ball it bounced off his brick hands it is what it is Seahawks get the rock now on the onside kick go down score another touchdown Marshall Lynch the beast I'm going crazy by the way I'm going crazy on Twitter everything capital letters exclamation points I'm calling Marshall Lynch the beast that he is by the way going into the end zone he did a little something son he was grabbing his you know what he wasn't supposed to be doing that he might get in trouble it is what it is this is not the first time that he's done that now the Seahawks have a one-point lead and they need to get a two-point conversion they're winning 20 to 19. They get a two-point conversion. That makes the game a three-point game. 
They don't get a two-point conversion. The Green Bay Packers, all they need to do is get a field goal, and they will win the game. Remember, this is all late in the fourth quarter. It's drama. It's straight drama. I'm going crazy. I'm not sitting down. I'm screaming. Seahawks get the two-point conversion. Ha-ha, Clinton Dix. Ha-ha. Had an opportunity to prevent the two-point conversion, and he missed out on that opportunity. This kid had a great game. It's a shame he had an interception with one hand at one point during the game. It's a shame he couldn't stop it. But Green Bay Packers get the ball. A-Rod, Aaron Rodgers goes right down the field. He's not playing. He goes right down the field. Gets the Packers in field goal position. Packers get the three points. We're going to overtime. Sexiness, I know. Now, this is where I have a little situation, a little problem. Seahawks win the toss, okay? Seahawks get the ball on offense. They score a touchdown. Overtime is sudden death. Game over. I have a problem because Aaron Rodgers is a phenomenal quarterback, and I didn't even get to see Aaron Rodgers go on the field. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I wanted to see after the Seahawks scored, Aaron Rodgers with an opportunity to try and score against the Seahawks. But those are the overtime rules that we have. Sudden death. Now, if the Seahawks would have kicked a field goal, then the Green Bay Packers would have gotten onto the field and had an opportunity to either match the Seahawks field goal or score a touchdown and win the game. But I feel like with the rules that we have in place for overtime right now, basically whoever wins the coin toss is probably going to win the game. So I feel like something should be done. I don't know, man. I just felt kind of disappointed to not see A-Rod get on the field with an opportunity to score. You feel me? This game is for all the marbles. How you going to tell me, yeah, the Seahawks won the game in overtime, but Aaron Rodgers didn't have a chance to get on the field? I feel like as a fan, and this is incomplete. If I was grading it, what a great game. But man, can I at least see Aaron Rodgers get on the field with an opportunity to either tie, win the game, or not win? Something. Come on, man. I want to see one of the best players in NFL history get on the field. As for the Packers, they were at a disadvantage because they were on the road. And they were in one of the most hostile environments in the NFL right now. Why were they on the road? It all goes back to week one. Both the Packers and the Seahawks have the same record, 12 and 4. But the tiebreaker was their week one matchup when Green Bay lost to Seattle. It goes to show that even though you may not think every game counts, every single game counts, especially when you're playing one of the top teams in the NFL. You better make sure you win and try and get that tiebreaker. Another thing that I noticed for the Green Bay Packers is I feel like all of them are to blame for this colossal collapse, especially their head coach, Mike McCarthy. I feel like Mike McCarthy got soft. He got scared. He started playing like a man that was scared to lose as opposed to somebody who's trying to win. I feel like... He had an opportunity to do some damage. Let me point out one of these ways that he could have did some damage. For example, Richard Sherman got injured in the game. Bad elbow. If I got Eddie Lacy, big strong running back, I'm not just going to run Eddie Lacy. I'm going to run him in the direction of Richard Sherman. I'm going to force Richard Sherman to get physical. I'm going to force him to get in the trenches. You feel me? I'm going to make him get dirty. He didn't really run the ball towards Richard Sherman after Richard Sherman got injured. By the way, Richard Sherman had a great interception in the first quarter. That got me excited. That was great. But I feel like he should have put a little bit more pressure on Sherms. There was a play where Sherman had a tackle. Pretty good tackle, did I? Right. But you could see, man, he was definitely favoring that elbow on that tackle. I feel like Packers blew it, the whole team. I'm not just pointing out the head coach. Every single person that was wearing yellow and white, all y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. And this is going to bother every single one of them. If they never win another Super Bowl, they will always remember this game. Similar to how Des Bryant will always remember that catch that was not. This is a shame, man. I really do feel bad for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. But shout out to the Seattle Seahawks. They stepped up to the plate, put in that work. They're going to the Super Bowl. And now let's talk about the Super Bowl matchup. Seattle Seahawks versus the New England Patriots. Now, remember I told you that the Patriots had a little situation after their game? Well, we're going to keep talking about it and talking about it leading up to the Super Bowl. Here's what happened. We found out that out of the 12 footballs that the New England Patriots used in their game against the Indianapolis Colts, 11 of them were not inflated properly. They were underinflated, and that is against the NFL rules. It basically gives the players on the Patriots an advantage. The quarterback, Tom Brady, apparently likes an underinflated ball. It's easier for him to throw it further, harder, I don't know. It's also easier for the running backs for the New England Patriots to grab onto the football and grip it, hold it nice and tight in here. Come to find out, by the way, just throwing this out here, the running backs for the New England Patriots have no fumbles this season. Ironically, now we're seeing that a scandal like this is coming out. 
makes you wonder why a ball that's not inflated all the way properly is easier to grab easier to hold on to people think about it why are they not fumbling come on son this is crazy the New England Patriots basically cheated against the Indianapolis Colts to go to the Super Bowl and it's a shame I'm gonna tell you why they didn't have to do this they were clearly the superior team against the Colts they were better than them they smoked them they scored 28 points in the second half why is this significant because out of their 45 points and 28 points in the second half came after the people the referees whoever noticed that the balls were not inflated properly at halftime then they re-inflated the balls which means the Patriots didn't have to do this I don't understand why but why is there so much drama there's another reason why there's so much drama it's like Somebody like an Eddie Guerrero. What does he do? He lies. He cheats. He steals. The New England Patriots are known for cheating. A few years back, there was a whole situation called Spy Gates. Basically, the Patriots were recording other teams' practices. This is completely not right. You can't do this. It's unethical. They were recording other teams' practices, and it basically gave them an advantage when they were going against that team. They knew what plays would be ran, the schemes, all that stuff. There's no telling, actually, what they knew. You want to know why? I'll tell you why. Because the commissioner for the NFL got the tape that the New England Patriots had and he destroyed them so clearly whatever the New England Patriots were doing was that bad because we'll never truly see the footage it got destroyed so you know it's awful anyway the New England Patriots have not won a Super Bowl since the Spygate situation. They had three Super Bowl victories in four years before the whole Spygate situation so I can already imagine as a New England Patriots fan you just want to see your team win and not cheat so you can get back some bragging rights and feel good about your team this is an embarrassment for the owner for the Patriots Robert Kraft the coach for the New England Patriots Bill Belichick should be ashamed of himself so many people like to make fun of him they call him Bill Bella cheat if you watch South Park you will see that big episode about cheating cheating and all this and that it's a shame now let me just throw this out right quick as a cheater he's a scumbag but a lot of cats are hating on him and it's like you wouldn't hate on him if he was cheating for your team i'm gonna keep it a buck with you if he was cheating for my giants my jets i probably wouldn't hate on him as much as i do now uh if my accountant does whatever he gotta do to make me more money i'm gonna be like all right that's what's up i can get a better call you feel me the San Francisco 49ers used to have a player named Terrell Owens on his team, right? The Dallas Cowboys used to hate him. A few years later, the Dallas Cowboys signed him. All of a sudden, Dallas Cowboys fans are like, yeah, we got Terrell Owens. That's what's up. My New York Yankees used to hate Johnny Damon. He used to play for the Boston Red Sox. All of a sudden, Johnny Damon came to the Yankees. Everybody's like, yeah, we got Damon. We love him. So, Mad Cats are hating Belichick right now. It is what it is. I know I don't like him, but... This is definitely putting a bad taste in everybody's mouth leading up to the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, it's all we're going to talk about. As for my predictions for the Super Bowl, I'm keeping my mouth shut. I'm keeping it a secret. I'm not telling my TEA drinkers who I think will win yet. But here's what I will say. Going into the games, I thought Seattle was the clear favorite to win everything. Seattle did not play good football against the Packers in the first three and a half quarters. I was very disappointed in Seahawks. I do not think this Seahawks defense is as good as it was last season. The New England Patriots impressed me all season long because they had a bad start to their season. They finished extremely strong, and I like to always say it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So I'm not going to give you my Super Bowl prediction yet, but what I will tell you before I give you my prediction, it's going to be a great game. And I want to see some more details come out of this whole deflate gate situation with the Patriots. We're going to have to get into all this stuff next episode. There you have it, folks, Mr. Alejandro's recap of the Patriots versus the Colts and the Seahawks versus the Packers. What did you think about both games? What do you think about the Flake game? And what do you think about our upcoming Super Bowl matchups, Seahawks and Patriots? Tell them in the comments. <laughs> Tonight's sexy bow tie is brought to you by Ted Baker. Green and black, because Mr. Alejandro is not whack. Tune in for more sports, cars, video games, fitness, and all that. Follow at Tellem Alejandro to hear my immediate reaction to live sports events. Or if you want to hear me cover a certain team or topic, tell them. 100th episode. Y'all know what time it is. Outro remix. Let's get it. Bars, here we go. Uh, uh, let the beat.
drop who the who? Mm, I tell him. Woo, you tell him. Yeah, we tell him. G -g go tell him. What? I tell him. After that, you tell him. Then we gon' go tell him. Then we, you tell him. Here we go. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Hey. Tell him, 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 tell him